The FBI has announced a large bounty for information leading to the arrest of the masterminds behind the Drydex botnet. So Stan, uh, there's a lot in the news about bounties lately, especially with the uh, new Star Wars show about bounty hunters. I understand you have a story about uh, a bounty put on some hackers. Uh, yes. So last week, I believe the FBI uh, put a $5 million bounty uh, for two people behind the Drydex uh, banking malware. Um, you guys are probably very familiar, and maybe many of our viewers are familiar with this malware family. Um, it spreads through phishing attacks, uh, or phishing emails, really. So you, you've probably seen many of these emails that contain maybe an attachment, it says click here, right click, enable macros, for the document to open. And generally, uh, at that point, you get some sort of a Trojan installed. So there were a couple of indictments that came out um, that named these individuals specifically. This is something that doesn't happen often, actually. I would say probably every two, three years is when you actually get um, specific individuals named um, with a cyber crime. Uh, but this quote uh, in the Department of Justice um, press release really caught my attention, which is, you know, the FBI is trying to send a strong message to let like all adversaries and uh, kind of criminals know that uh, they will be held accountable. So you might be doing a crime maybe you know, five years ago, they are probably trying to stop you and um, they will hold you accountable for it. What led them to, to release this bounty now? Is it, are they sending a message or did something sort of tip them to this, them, them being available? Um, it feels like there's maybe a little bit more behind the scenes here. Some of the uh, cyber crime here goes back many years. Yeah. So they're saying that uh, these people have operated for 10 years or maybe even more and have amassed uh, or tried to steal over a hundred million dollars uh, during this time frame, uh, which is a lot, a lot of money. Uh, and some of their crimes is not just running the malware, it's actually the financial aspect of how do you take a hundred million dollars from crime and basically launder it or clean it so right, that right. you can seem like a successful businessman. And the thing that these, uh, I guess, uh, criminals were doing uh, is using um, uh, money mules um, and some kind of like, uh, you might have actually even seen some of these ads, work from home, do a simple easy job, receive packages, send them somewhere else. Right, right. Well, some of those jobs are actually related to this kind of money mule operation where you buy things and send them somewhere else. You don't really know why you're doing it. You're getting a little bit of a commission, uh, but ultimately you might be um, uh, assisting in this crime. So one other thing about the indictment that was released and as well as this, this bounty uh, is that uh, the, uh, the handle of one of the criminals is Aqua, which is a handle that was used maybe three or four years ago in 2015 that was mentioned in another indictment for two other individuals who are actually already serving time and I think are pretty much have served their time who were part of the Zeus banking Trojan. So uh, I guess in 2015 there was something very similar going on. So these people, these um, criminals are kind of still out there, uh, which is why the FBI is putting together the bounty uh, for any information leading to their capture and arrest. So can you tell us a little bit more about Drydex, maybe just to kind of give more context to what these guys are accused of operating? Yes, so Drydex itself is a banking Trojan, but I think it can do much more than just uh, uh, be a banking Trojan, so to speak. It's actually like a password stealer. So if you get a Drydex infection on your computer, um, it's gonna try to steal uh, any kind of uh, passwords you have stored in your browsers, um, in your maybe password saves. And some people actually uh, create a document, a notepad, or a Word document or something like that, and they label it my passwords and they write all their passwords down. So adversaries like this, they'll be looking for Word documents like that. Um, some malware we've seen tries to steal your credentials to like any S uh, SSH or uh, SSH keys you have or VNC, um, anything like that. 
Um, so this one in particular was obviously trying to steal all passwords. Uh, but what they were doing is they were trying to figure out like how do you monetize people's passwords. Yeah. Right. And one of yeah. the clear ways to monetize people's passwords is uh, to log into their banking and then uh, once you log into their bank account you can authorize different kinds of transactions. And in these indictments they actually named um, actually not as many victims as there actually turned out to be. Uh, but several victims were actually named. I think maybe about six or seven different kinds of businesses um, all over the place. And I know we track... Can we still see Drydex? Drydex uh, is something that we do see in a way. It's actually quite related to Zeus, but we see a lot of like old uh, infections on abandoned infrastructure. Mm. But there are many, many variants of very similar malware. So um, um, a very new and pertinent thread we're tracking is called TrickBot. Um, it does impact um, hundreds of uh, different, actually it's probably thousands of victims out there and it spreads in very similar fashion. So uh, if, it's, you know, if it's not these criminals, there's always some other kind of criminals out there um, that are perpetrating a similar thing and we're paying attention to it and uh, we're kind of tracking it. Is there any evidence to show why this is coming up now? For Like you said, so they're saying our memory is long, right? But something may have, must have just broken some sort of evidence. I don't have any special insight yeah. on that unfortunately right. it might be just uh, uh, kind of a re reminder before yeah, maybe yeah. the holiday season or something like that to make these people a little bit more visible you know there might be somewhere where they're trying to relax for the holidays or really right, right. enjoy their time off but this will make them be a little bit more uh, well wanted really right they'll make them yeah I wonder too they, like make them we, we've seen in the news you know some of these um, operators of botnets retire, right? Oh, I'm getting out of the game, made all of my money. This is kind of that a message for, for that sort of activity too. Even if you're retired, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, no, this guy hasn't really retired. Uh, the FBI, as Stan mentioned, back in like 2015, managed to shut down a big chunk of Drydex's infrastructure and then a year and a half or so later, they were back. Uh, they they rebuilt it because they didn't get the all of the people behind it. And these two guys, um, especially the the one guy uh, here, has moved on. You know, not just from Drydex. He was the one who was uh, apparently in charge of what the Justice Department is calling Evil Corp. So somebody was watching Mr. Robot. And uh, and uh, he's uh, supposedly got ties to Russian intelligence and, you know, so some nation-state stuff. So that that's one of the big reasons why, um, even if they had shut down some of the infrastructure, they still wanted to go after this particular guy. Yeah, I think another key thing to point out is, you know, this was a, a, an international operation here uh, with assistance from many different governments, Netherlands, yeah. Germany, Belarus, Ukraine, and Russian Federation. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that working with such a large worldwide organization can also be difficult, but something must have happened. Right, you're right. Directly. Something in the investigation or yeah. the agreements between these countries must have led to a point where they were comfortable making you know, this taking this step. Yes. Yeah. I think this is just a reminder to all adversaries out there that you know their activity can be subject you know they will be subject to arrest i think it's clear that law enforcement you know maybe if we look back 15 years ago um we were talking a lot about stories where law enforcement maybe didn't know how to process these kinds of crimes uh or they didn't have the resources to process these kinds of crimes but i think today we can say that they do have the resources they do know how to um uh, prosecute these things. I'm sure there is much more that can be done, uh, but this is a, an example of a step in the right direction uh, for properly prosecuting. And, you know, right. Yeah. I mean, we way. talk a lot about protecting ourselves, protecting the network, protecting you know, our assets, but this kind of that extra s step of attribution and law enforcement getting involved and hopefully disincentivizing this malicious activity. Right. Yes. And, and we need that. Like we can't, you know, as corporate folks, we can't we can't, you know, issue something like this. But and, that and should these help particular us. Particular actors, they're accused of having stolen 
you know, $100 million or something like that. I mean, this is not a small amount of money that they've stolen over time. So that's another incentive for you know, law enforcement to, to continue to go after them. And you know, chances of them getting much of it back may be small, but you know, if there's that kind of money involved, there's incentive to, to keep after it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the disincentive is there. And I think the message, like you started with Stan, you know, sending this message, it's, it's helpful to our, our world. I think this is a perfect story that says crime doesn't pay. You know, these people have been running a, a large botnet, stealing credentials, victimizing a lot of both large and small businesses. Um, and they've largely went on, you know, seemingly unpunished for 10 years or more. They've been obscured maybe through some sort of anonymization, but I think we can see here that they're not as anonymous, maybe even as anonymous as they thought.